Hey, it's Jazz at Red Panda Reads and today we're doing my February reading wrap up. So I read nine books in the month of February, three fantasy, if we're including in Greek myth retelling, three non-fiction, one thriller and two LGBTQ plus romance novels. Ooh, it was actually a very good reading month. I gave about four of these books five stars. Two of them are in my top books of 2021 Goodreads list and I'm just really excited to share those books with you guys. So let's get started. The first book I want to talk about I do not actually have in physical form and that is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. So I started listening to this on the 22nd of November and I was listening to it with my partner. So every evening we'd list, listen to 30 minutes to an hour while we were going to sleep. And of course that meant <laughs> as a 57 hour audio tape that we were going to be spending at minimum two months listening to it, maximum a third of a year listening to it. And although initially I was a little bit concerned about that slow pace, because I can read quite quickly, especially when I'm really excited about a book, listening to Rhythm of War with Rob was fantastic because we got to talk about it as it went along and there was just so much to absorb. So if you have not read any Brandon Sanderson and you are a fantasy fan, here are three reasons why you should read Brandon Sanderson. Number one, he does so much research into things such as mental health and gender before including them in his books. He consults people about it and just makes sure that his representation is good because there are certain things as a writer that you won't have experience and sometimes you need to be quite sensitive with how you deal with it. And in Rhythm of War, for example, I thought his representation of PTSD was handled so well. Number two, as you have probably heard, Brandon Sanderson's magic systems are absolutely incredible. They have so many rules, they are so imaginative, they can be manipulated in so many different ways which makes them so interesting and all the books he's written, all of them are unique. And the Stormlight Archives, which Rhythm of War is the fourth one in, is no exception. And what is crazy about this book is he is bringing in so many different magic systems from so many different places and combining them. And it is so exciting. And there's so, oh, I just, it's very hard for me to go into what Rhythm of War is about because it is the fourth in a series where each book is about a thousand pages but just imagine a high fantasy we're talking war we're talking political intrigue we're talking love we're talking betrayal we're talking magic and it's just phenomenal go and check some brandon sanderson out have you read rhythm of war were you as blown away as me like it was by far maybe not by far but i think my favorite brandon sanderson book in the stormlight archives and i just absolutely adored it. So now I spent four minutes talking about that, let's move on. So the second book, a fantasy book I read was Six of Crows by Lee Baduga. I finally, I finally was convinced by the booktube community to pick this book up because everyone had been raving about it. It is a YA fantasy heist novel set in a alternative fantasy world where six people who are part of a gang known as the crows are hired to go and rescue or like capture a scientist who is making this very dangerous drug which if ingested by people who have magic in this world known as Grisha causes them to become extremely dangerous and extremely addicted to this drug to the point where they will probably end up dying. So that is the concept and it was good. I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the heist plot. It was one of those plots which you keep on thinking things are going to go wrong and then miraculously 
they'd already planned for that and I love that type of thing in books the kind of how the heck are they going to get out of this and then they do I really enjoy getting to know each of the characters individually as well so you have the kind of rogue type the magic weaver the more um bodyguard types and then the kind of misunderstood quiet leader who everyone's really terrified of but is just very secretive so you have all these wonderful characters and it was good the thing that i didn't really care about was the relationships between some of these characters when they tried to create romances and relationships between some of the characters it felt very forced apparently it's better in the second book because it's a duology um, please let me know if it is and if you agree with me or not it was a good book again just didn't care about relationships but i do care about love because oh my god love just so red white and royal blue was another book that was circulating around youtube at the end of last year and i just had to pick it up it is by Cassie McQuiston and she wrote it as a way to escape the realities of the um, previous US election and she wanted to basically create an alternative outcome where we have a woman ruling the USA and is very progressive and it follows her son as he falls in love with the Prince of England and the political complications that causes and I adored their relationship, the growth of it, just the beauty and the kind of struggles that they overcome together and even though there are parts in this book where one character for a time doesn't communicate with another it is resolved relatively quickly and that is something I can't stand in romances when half the book is just spent with them ignoring each other due to some miscommunication and whatever this happened in this book it was really minimal I adored all the characters I thought there was fantastic representation in this book and it was just lovely I then, I then read Heartstopper Volume 2, which is a basically just about two young guys who fall in love and what it's like having that love together during secondary school. And the thing that this reminds me of is that honeymoon period you have when you first meet someone and the sparks and the fact all you can think about is that person. It's just so lovely and it transports me back to that honeymoon period feeling and it's just lovely and the art, look at the art. Oh, oh it's, just, it's just great. Okay, next up I read um, a thriller, The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. One house, two families, three bodies. There are actually three families involved, but maybe that didn't ring as well. So I haven't read a thriller for ages. And when I was first thinking about what I wanted to say about this book, it was mostly negative. Negative in the fact that there was a lot of characters that I really didn't like. I found the parts of it very uncomfortable to read. I thought that the most interesting character didn't really get explored till the end and then you didn't get further depth of exploration and so I felt like the first kind of three quarters of the book could have been condensed and then more exploration of one of the main characters. I rated it 2.5 stars. However, I read this book in a weekend and it's quite a chunky book so I must have been enjoying it to some degree. I definitely was intrigued. I kept on wanting to know what happened. And although at times I was dissatisfied by the outcome of what was happening, I still just wanted to read more. So is it possible to not think a book is amazing while enjoy it? Yeah, I, I think it's very fair to say you may not think a book is amazing, but you can still enjoy the experience of reading it. This book follows Libby, a 25 year old woman who finds out she's inherited a massive house in Chelsea worth millions of pounds. She was adopted as a baby and when she finds out she's inherited this house, she also finds out that when she was found in this house alone, she was found next to her dead parents and another guy in black ceremonial robes and a suicide note next to them 
and apparently she had two siblings who just vanished. So this story explores what happened to her, why she was left alone in the crib, where are her siblings, why her parents were involved in this cult-like thing. And the premise is really interesting and it was, it was okay. I mean, as I said, I read it, I consumed it, I must have enjoyed it. Yeah. The other non-fiction book I read was Circe by Madeline Miller. First of all, I just want to say I listened to it on audio tape and it was voiced by Perdita Week. And she did an absolutely fabulous job. I think for me, it's what just pushed the enjoyment of the book for me. Circe is a Greek myth retelling which tells the story of Circe. Circe is a Greek goddess who is best known for her role in turning Odysseus's men into pigs. Funny story, when I was younger, I think year one or year two, we did the Odyssey at our school and I really wanted to be Penelope and my best friend got cast as Penelope and I was cast in percussion. I didn't even have an acting role. And I was so upset and so jealous of her. And then next year we had the nativity and I wanted to be the donkey that Mary rides to Bethlehem. And I ended up just being a generic stable donkey. Oh, just not fair. Maybe, oh, anyway. Um, as well as find, so you follow Circe from the moment she is born to her life as a goddess, why she ends up on that abandoned island where Odysseus in the end finds her, her loves, her lives, her children, the people she meets, the things she does. And throughout this book, there are hints towards different Greek myths. And for me, this is the reason I didn't enjoy it as much. I would have loved to have picked up my old childhood Greek myth book, read all the Greek myths, then read Circe. In addition, it is quite a slow paced book, just following Circe's journey. There's not really a clear start, middle and end, which is something I do like in the book. Saying that, it was absolutely beautifully written. I found it incredibly atmospheric. And Circe, I had such a emotional bond with. She was a character who her whole life had been pushed aside and you see her reacting to that and turning from this really joyous individual who just wants to be happy and loved to a determined strong-willed goddess living on an island on her own trying to make best from what's trying to make the best of what she's got and I don't always agree with her decisions but I understand why she makes them which I think is a very good quality of a character in a book. So the last three books I read are non-fiction books, which were Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig, Kerry Hudson's Lowborn, and Fatally Ever After by Stephanie Yeboa. I enjoyed all these books, and I've already talked in a lot of depth about both of these in my recent non-fiction video. So if you'd like to find out more about these, please look at the link below. Um, Lowborn is basically talking about Kerry Hudson's experience of growing up in poverty in the UK and is an incredible, is an incredibly moving, emotional and informative read. Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig documents his experiences with mental health and acts both as a memoir for events in his life and also a self-help book with how to help with your own anxiety and depression. Fatally Ever After is Stephanie Yeboah's debut novel where she talks about her journey of navigating life as a black plus size woman in a world obsessed with body image. I found this book quite difficult to read because it opened my eyes to a lot of things which I do in life without realising it that could come across as fat phobic. I think highly due to the society we live in. So this was a very eye-opening read. It was definitely made me think about the effects of just everything around us on body image and how it's very easy to be made to feel less than you should be just because of how you look. And yeah, very, very interesting read and oh, just absolutely beautiful.
gorgeous colours in this book, gorgeous images. I've only just finished it, have a lot to digest and I will talk more about it in a non-fiction reading wrap up at a later date. Wonderful, so I hope you guys all had a lovely reading month. I will see you hopefully next week and have a wonderful week. Go and enjoy the sunshine if it's sunny where you are because it is sunny here and make sure you look after yourselves and love yourselves. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click that subscribe button, follow me on Instagram, always happy to have a chat, always love to have a chat. Anyway, take care everyone, bye bye.